Well, as we start a new year, it's probably a good time to take a look at your church's website. Each new year is a good time to make some of those changes and take a look at some of those things maybe you've been avoiding for a whole year. So in this episode, we're going to break down eight things that you can do to make sure your church website is ready for the new year. Let's do this. So, hey guys, I'm Thomas. And I'm Ian. And today we're talking about church website changes that you need to make as we go into the new year here. That should be a good conversation. Um, Ian, you work with our clients here at Reach Right, and you look yep. at dozens of church websites every single day. You yeah. uh, and your team churn out our church website strategy reviews. And so uh, yeah. you're neck deep in this all the time. <laughs> and so I yeah. thought it'd just be a good one for us to talk about. I want to ask you a few questions about what you're seeing out there and things yeah. that you think churches need to change. I think it should be a, a good conversation. Agreed? Yeah, excited about it. Church websites still absolutely vital in the age of apps and social media, church database software. The fact of the matter is a first-time visitor or someone new uh, will end up at your website 85% of the time before they physically come. So uh, yeah. there's a lot of different marketing avenues, but one thing still remains is everyone will naturally funnel to the website. So we always right. kind of look at it as the foundation and to make sure kind of what you look, first things first approach is what we would say. Yeah, when, I mean, when it's, it I think it, yeah. with the rise of social media, it ne isn't necessarily always the first impression that people have, but it right. is, I think even with social media, it is going to be the, the best place for you to showcase what your organization is all about. I think yeah. the reason for that is that you don't really control what social media is. Um, you don't control that platform. So yeah. you can't really curate an experience for someone and help right. them walk through it. So really dialing in your website, I mean, it's it's as important, if not more important than it has ever been before. Yeah. And I don't see any sign of that changing. Uh, contrary to, uh, yeah. we, we've had people tell us, I'm sure you've heard this, right? I, I know I did back when I used to be in the weeds with people with websites, but you know, we're just going to focus on a Facebook page instead of social media right. or instead right. of our yeah. website, or we're going to do mistake. Instagram instead of social media or yeah. instead of our website again. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, that's bad. That's bad thinking. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. you need to have a good church website. And so let's talk about some of those things that yeah. need One to more change. Quick thing I'll Add, Thomas, oh, before jumping into it, what everyone's doing these days is they're Googling churches yeah. near me or a certain kind of church, their churches in XYZ city. And one thing you'll notice is that Google looks to send the traffic to your website first and foremost. So that right. another reason why not your uh, it's page important, your right? Instagram not your Facebook page. page. So, but let's dig right in, Thomas. Absolutely. Cool. All right. So uh, the first change you need to look at, we talked about was mobile optimization. And this yeah. one kind of surprised me because it's like, here we are, it's, yeah. uh, we're going into 2024. Uh, obviously, most yeah. traffic that is happening on your church website is on a mobile device now. It's yeah. more likely to be on a mobile device than, you know, a, a dinosaur, like an actual computer, like we use all the time here yeah. in our office. But right. um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is this still something that people have not gotten wind of here? Are they are they still not optimized for mobile? I think most people have gotten wind of it. Like I will rarely come across a pastor or ministry leader that doesn't know they need to look good with their website on, on mobile devices. But I will say, I and more these days compared to like I'd say five years ago, I would come across a lot of websites that are still not, the term is mobile responsive, that they're going right. to respond to any mobile device being pulled up from um, now, these days, I will say that most are mobile responsive. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to give a good mobile experience, and we'll dig into that here in just a few, but but um, there are still so several that I come across that were designed for desktops. They're not mobile responsive at all, and I will just tell you that you are really missing out on a lot of visitors and people taking that next step if you don't make sure yeah. that your website's optimized for mobile. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I think the last number I saw was 63% of traffic is on a mobile device or yeah. a tablet. And so yeah. you're just saying 63% of people, we don't really need you to come to our church. Right. Uh, so right. that's basically what you're doing if you're not yeah. in this. And I think you're right. Like, anything that was designed, you know, hopefully any website developer in the last few years has made a mobile responsive website for yeah. you. But if you have a website that's probably three, four years old, chances are you may not have a responsive website. So definitely something you want to look at. And if it's not, uh, time to do something about that. Um, you're, right. you're giving Indeed. away visitors and that's no good. So yeah. Uh, next one, uh, we talked about, I guess, a, an enhanced user experience. I think just, um, Really, I think the key is like designing a website that is yeah. made to engage. It's not just yeah. informational. 
Um, right. It's not just telling people about what time your services are and what ministries you offer, but to actually foster engagement. Um, are you yeah, seeing that as something right. that people need to do? Or how, are, how do you see churches doing that now, Ian? That's still a big issue with church yeah. websites that I come across is that, you know, they may have a mobile responsive website and they may have certain elements that they need to have or content that they need to have, but they're not presenting it in a way for the user, which when we talk about a user on your website, you need to be focused on someone who is checking you out for the very first time. They should be mm. priority number one. That doesn't mean we leave our members in the dust with the website. And that's another subject. You definitely want it to be a tool, but the whole strategy needs to be converting someone into a first time visitor or having them take some sort of a next step. Mm. Uh, and that means getting to what you talked to Thomas. And we covered it a little bit with mobile. It's one thing if you just have a mobile responsive site, but is the navigation, what they're clicking through, is that designed to give them a good experience? Is it putting content that they're interested in front face rather than give you one example. I see a lot of church websites. First thing you come is a big slider with all the events that assumes that someone who's new and looking for church right. is already, in, already interested in your events. No. So you got to think through these things. Um, it definitely takes a little bit of work and, and expertise. That's why we love helping churches with it for sure. But, but yeah, you want a good user experience and that, that doesn't mean just user friendly. That means putting things in front of people that, that they're yeah. looking for and that they're going to do something with. And I think the thing to remember with this is that when we talk about user experience, your primary user is people that are not yet a part of your church. Yeah, I mean, church members, like as much as we think they get on our website all the time and check us out, they just yeah. don't do that really. I mean, they, they yeah. do that in a in a pinch to find out oh, what time was that event happening. Right. That's right. really about the extent of it at this day, this day and age. Yeah. So you really want to make sure that for someone that's not yet a part of your church that doesn't know who you are, that's right. the user that you really want to make sure they have a great experience. And that's yeah, it. case in point, that event as a yeah. big slider, as a big no-no. That was so, yeah. uh, you know, eight years ago, probably doing yeah. those kinds I'd of things. But yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is, uh, it's probably time to consider a content refresh. Yeah. Uh, this is something that uh, I think you need to probably visit on your site and the things that you're saying about your church every once in a while. Content is king, yeah. as we say in the industry. Yeah. Uh, so what are we, what are we thinking here, Ian? Yeah, lots of stuff. Contents, of course, a, a big, broad topic that we don't have time to dig into all of those ins and outs uh, for on this podcast. But I, I, like you said, evaluate your content, I think, is the first step. First of all, make sure, is it still up to date? Is it mm -hmm. relevant? Meaning, you know, yeah. are your... Do you have all of your ministries? Uh, do you have old ministries that are not uh, ministries anymore on your website? Um, but then I think it's it's thinking of maybe some new creative things, like maybe it is getting testimonials from and stories from people who have been impacted at your church. Maybe it is considering a blog, um, and uh, that will take some work, as we've talked a lot about. Um, but um, but definitely making sure events um, are, are definitely up to date, sermons yeah. are up to date. This is all content. And then, you know, it's text, it's video, uh, right. you know, so um, definitely video. I would say if you don't have much video on your website, and again, this is easy to pull off even for a small church that doesn't have a big media team. There are things like welcome videos you can do easily. There's there's a lot of things that are very low cost effective. So again, video is one of the many things, but those are just a few ideas that we can rattle off at least quickly for now. Yeah, I like the I like the testimonies idea. I think that that's something that is if I'm going to look at one trend that I see happening yeah. for all websites out there, focusing yeah. on testimonies, text, video testimonies, everything, just having that. And I think churches are a great place to have testimonials on the site. It helps people kind yeah. of build up courage to visit for yeah. the first time when they see people that look like them having a yep. great experience at your church. So good stuff. That's it. All right. Yeah. Uh, revisit your online giving. That's the next one yeah. here. I think it's time every year. You should probably take a look at this. What is that online giving experience like? Yeah. Is it uh, intuitive? Uh, is yep. it uh, not too in your face, but at the same time, yeah. not too hidden? Lots of questions around that. What, what, what advice would you have for people, Ian? Oh, man, it comes to mind. I always chuckle when I, when I think of this a long time ago when you and I were uh, uh, helping churches with websites uh, years and years back. One strategy I saw was a pastor on the home page with a very nice suit leaning against a golden pillar. Uh, and underneath his feet and the pillar is where you select the amount uh, to give. We don't recommend that strategy. Uh, so, but, uh, and so, but we're talking about more than that, but you're right. Revisit it. Look at how it's being presented. One of the things we don't like is uh, 
I will say most churches, let me take a step back. Most churches have online giving now right. on their websites. I still run into a few that are resistant. It's another subject, but um, it's what I see the most is how the online giving is being presented. And, and, and yes, you want that functional and secure. Make sure you're using a good giving provider. But at the same time, when someone clicks to give, does it just go straight to giving? Or are you talking about what giving means to your church and what it means yeah. to the giver? Um, you know, are, are you, do you have content that is showing that your church is not just all about receiving the money, but how are you giving back to the community you're serving? What right. does it mean spiritually? So a lot of the storytelling behind the giving is, is a key thing, but definitely want to make sure it's up to date, it's functional, and that your giving platform you're using is going to meet the needs of the people wanting to, to, to give. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. so you probably ought to, I think most churches are doing some kind of multimedia, obviously, yeah. uh, live streaming are do a lot of them are doing that. Uh, we've said before on episodes and other videos that we're not huge fans of live streaming for most churches, but mm -hmm. it is something that a lot of churches do take a foray into. And at a minimum, yeah. you're putting your, um, almost every church is putting videos of their sermons online at this point. Yeah. So um, yeah. what should we do? be doing a checkup on there when it comes to yeah, and multimedia I, 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 streaming? I'm glad you said how we often recommend that most churches don't do it. And I think uh, there's a lot to be said for this, but to keep it simple for our podcast today is just that we have seen since the pandemic live streaming grow into something more positive, meaning churches up their game with it. They had to rely upon it during the pandemic. And a lot of churches through that, they they put a lot into their production and they got it dialed in where it, when I say dialed in, it looks good. The quality is good with live streaming. Um, but I think that's a big thing is they could hurt you more than help you if the quality of the live streaming and how it's being conveyed from the website um, is is not good. Um, and that's why we say in multimedia, it could be that you do a good job of recording audio messages and keeping those up to date on website. That still has value. Now, yeah. if you can do video, great. And it maybe doesn't have to be live. It could be on-demand video sermons. It could be those things. But again, you know, I, I think that you got to kind of see what you can pull off uh, in-house at a church to know what's best for you there. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. All right, next one. Uh, and this is kind of uh, my area uh, that I kind of dabble into more a little bit, but uh, yeah. SEO optimization. Uh, that's yeah. something that I think that churches need to get pretty serious about that. It's no secret that for my church that I was pastoring most recently, uh, that was some of our secret sauce, uh, whether through using the $10,000 a month Google grant or really hitting local search engine optimization really hard. Yeah. We were a small church that went from 30 to about 150 and became the most visible online church yeah. in our entire community by yeah. really not even working too hard, but just following some of these SEO best practices. Here's the trick yeah. is that most churches don't pay a lot of attention to SEO. So that makes yeah. ranking for things actually much easier than you would expect as opposed to yeah. in harder industries. So if you tried to rank uh, in the life insurance industry, it's next to impossible and people pay upwards of oh. $250 a click to Google yeah. for people just to click onto your website for those kinds of keywords around life insurance yeah. and those things. Yeah. For churches, it's a totally different ballgame and that's actually a good news is that it's not yeah. as hard as it is in other industries. So right. um, get serious about this. There's a few yep. things that you can do. We ran this experiment um, just the other day with one of our clients where they were having a hard time ranking in local searches and on Google ads. And so what we did is we actually took one of their landing pages, their new here page, and we used their city, their city name. So we, um, they were in Pittsburgh. And so yeah. we did churches in the Pittsburgh area, churches in Pittsburgh, PA, Pittsburgh churches. We use those terms uh, a bit. We didn't stuff it in there, but we use those yeah. terms on their churches for you page uh, or they're uh, looking for a church near you page. And we saw an immediate increase in the number of people that were visiting the page and people were filling out a form saying they want to come and visit. It was really cool to see that kind of stuff. So little changes like that for churches can go a long way uh, yeah. So start talking and thinking about some of that. If you're looking for some help, uh, we have a bunch of uh, services we offer here at ReachRight. Uh, we'd be yep. happy to help you with some of that if you want to dig in deeper or just looking for some input. Uh, they should feel free to give us a ring, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Next one uh, is cybersecurity. A little bit of a strange one, but I think it's good to have a annual checkup on this yeah. area because 
cybersecurity doesn't really matter in your day to day until it does, right? Until yeah. you have that issue. And we have, over the years, we have seen horror stories we about have. churches that didn't take their cybersecurity seriously. We've seen yeah. church websites replaced with pornography sites. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen just all kinds of church websites go down. We've seen people uh, lose their domain and someone else uh, snatch it up and they basically lose all of their online presence because of it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, would you agree? And we got to get, a, I don't know, any advice on what we should do cybersecurity wise on an annual basis? Just make sure your plugins, your software is up to date. Make sure you got good secure hosting. Uh, making sure you're using the right passwords. Yeah, that, those are those are some of the main things. So yeah, yeah. passwords are one that you you probably I I we see a lot of churches. I, I got to be honest because we sometimes people will just throw us their password. We don't ever ask for passwords, but with our clients, sometimes they'll they'll just send us a password to get in there. And I can't tell you how many of their times are just, you know, all lowercase Jesus or something like that, that it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just stuff that's so easily hacked and it's just by God's grace that they're not yet. So take a second, get into all of your, uh, all your website and everything and, and make sure that you have yeah. strong passwords, do an annual checkup on that. I think you'll uh, you'll sleep a lot easier if you do some of that. I'll sleep easier at least. So yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, last one up is uh, we have social media integration. Uh, this is something that is pretty important. Uh, so any thoughts on that? Make sure that you just link people out to your social media channels. And, and that's really the main thing. It used to be we pulled in a lot of social media, but mainly just making sure they're visible most of the time and the footer sufficient. And then, yeah. Yeah, you want to make sure that they're integrated and you want to make sure that they have the same brand on your social media platforms and on your website. I think putting those two together, I think it really goes a long way. So um, yeah, that's just some ideas. Anything to say yeah. as we uh, wrap up, Ian? No, we hope this stuff was helpful. Yeah, that's it. Well, good. Thanks, guys, for being a part of the Retrite family. If, it, if this has been helpful to you, hit that subscribe button. And uh, thanks. We'll see you next time. See ya.